my stars shine darkly over me, the malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No, soof, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. My name is Sebastian, which I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended, but you, ma'am, altered that for some hour before you took me from the breach of the waves was my sister drowned. Last the day. A lady, madam, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But believe that she bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already, ma'am, with salt water. Though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Good Antonia, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for your love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare ye well at once, I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. <laughs> the gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But, come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport. And I will go. <laughs> the Countess Olivia. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains if you had taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that she put your lord into desperate assurance that she'll none of him. She took the ring from me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her. If it be worth stooping for, here it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside had not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that straight me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak and starts distractedly. She loves me. Sure. <laughs> the cunning of her passion invites me in this uh, churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring, why, he sent her none. <laughs> I am the man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if it be so, as it is, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Oh, disguise, I see thou art a wickedness. How will this fade? Uh, um. My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. <laughs> what will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As, as I am a woman, <laughs> Now, last day, time, thou must untangle this, not I. <laughs> it's uh, too hard a knot for me to untie. Jerk of and a fortune!
and bid you out of doors. Do not trust me. Oh, that's well, right. Well, 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 for the love of God, please. <laughs> Masters! <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> I mean, no wits, manners, nor honesty, but to gavel around like tinkers at this time of night? <laughs> No respect for place, persons, nor time in you? Um, well, we did keep time, sir, and our cats were- Sir, tell me! I must be round with you. My lady bade me to tell you that if you could separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome in this house. If not, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Well, then farewell, dear heart, for needs I must be gone. Nay, good sir Toby. His eyes do show. Much credit to you. Shall I bid him go? What and if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare no? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. not. <laughs> Art thou any more than a steward? Dost thou think that because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and dance? Prize my lady's favor in anything more than contempt. You would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ear. <laughs> Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. For Monsieur Malvolio, if I do not go him into a nay ward and make a common recreation of him, do not think I have enough wit to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Well, possess us! Shh. Possess us! Tell us something of him! Mm. Mary, sir, sometimes he is kind of a Puritan. Ah, uh, well, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. <laughs> what? For being a Puritan? By exquisite reason, dear knight. What will you do? I will drop in his way a few obscure epistles of love. I can write very much like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, one can hardly make distinction of our hands. Oh, I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> That color. Oh, and your horse now would make him an ass. Oh, I doubt not. Oh, to will be astorable. Sports <laughs> <laughs> uh, Royal, I warrant you. I will plant you two. Oh, you do? You three, where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. Uh, put this night to bed and, and dream on the event. Farewell. Before me. She's a good wench. Uh, she's a big old true bread. And one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once too. <laughs> Let's to bed, Knight. <laughs>